tonight, Lord. Tonight, God. You do it tonight, God. You
bread and light Sitting down from love Many things you want on earth Oh, the King of Coffee
Hallelujah. To save humanity. We thank you, Lord God, that you came to save everyone, Lord God. It is not your wish, Lord God, that no one, Lord, goes to hell. So we thank you. We call you Jesus all tonight. We call you Jesus all tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we shake off today's business and we come into your presence, Lord God. Because when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, our souls can help but say hallelujah. There's strength in the name of Jesus. Mercy endure it forever. Don't mess with a 
child God. Hallelujah. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, giants, for his mercy endured forever. And gave their land for an inheritance, for his mercy endured forever. Even a heritage unto his servant, for his mercy endured forever. I love this. Who remembered us in our low state. Mm -hmm. For his mercy endured forever. And has redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endures forever. Who giveth food to all flesh. For his mercy endured forever. Oh, give thanks unto God of heaven. For his mercy endured forever. Amen. I want to resolve before I get into the lesson. I want to resolve two things before we start. The first thing is I want to answer the question to the devil who says, how can I give God thanks when I'm going through hell? Mm. If you are having problems, everybody got problems. You're having problems in your body, your finances, your kids, your marriage, or whatever. We're not saying that you are thanking you are thankful for those problems. But what you are thankful for is that God going to see you through every last one of them. Hallelujah. If you stand your ground, God will see you through every last one of them. And you know, it's a funny thing how we have the key. Now, when I talk about key, I know in your, in your imagination, you see a key that unlocks the door. But that's not the key I'm going to talk about tonight. This key to the kingdom is like a teacher that has the key to the test. If you know the key, if the teacher that has the key to the test, guess what's on there? All the answers. So we have the answer to everything to get into the kingdom. And one of the keys that's on the test is thankfulness. And God has been talking to me and he said, I dare my people to be thankful to me no matter what they're going through. But what has happened is the body of Christ, not everybody, so don't get mad at me. I'm just a messenger. But the body of Christ has wrapped himself into what the world is saying that's going on. Yeah. And the authority that God has given us, nobody is daring to raise up and charge the authority. Amen. 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 And so God says, you know, one of the keys I want my people to begin to do is to be Thankful. So tonight we're going to talk about the four parts of this lesson. We're going to thank him because he's good. Yes. Sometimes when you're going through, you just got to thank God because he's good. He ain't gave you nothing that you know of. You, you, maybe your prayer ain't been answered. But if you can just think about his goodness and all that he's done before whatever you're going through, you can make it. Yes. Then we're going to talk about sometimes you just got to thank him for his creation. This Hallelujah uh, Psalms is broken down to good, thank him for his good, his creation, redemption, and victory. Amen? Yeah. You can yeah. see at the end. First of all, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. This Lord is Yahweh, right. the self-existing one. Yeah. No need for dependence on anyone. Bad all by himself. Yeah. Now, who don't want to give thanks to someone? You know, he ain't got to call nobody and ask them for nothing. Everything that he needs is in him. Everything that we need is in him. If you need peace, you need to call on Yahweh. Because Yahweh is the peace. He is the peace that you need. Amen? Yeah. So he's self-existent. So it's establishing who we giving thanks to. Amen? Right. So we're giving thanks to Yahweh because he's self-existent. He was in the beginning before the beginning. Hallelujah. Right. He was there. Nobody can put a time. People say 2,000 years. No, he said before the foundation of this world, I was. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Then it says, oh, give thanks unto God of gods. I don't care what God they are worshiping. I God. I say this on YouTube. And Facebook. Our God, the God of, of the universe, is God of gods. He's mightier than your God. Hallelujah. He's greater than your God. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. He's not tin. He's not rock. He's not stone. But the Bible says that our God sees it. Our God hears. Our God has compassion. And he answers. 
Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's the God that yeah. you serve. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. God of gods. And then it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. This is Adonai. He's the master of everything. Amen. He is the ruler. He is the master. So we've established from that point on, you would notice, it doesn't say anything about God, Lord, anymore. It just says to him. Because by now you ought to know who you give it thanks to. Amen. He said, by now you have read who I am. I've introduced myself to, to you. So you ought to know who you give it thanks to. Amen. There is absolute power in giving thanks to God. Yep, yep. For the strength that you need to destroy yokes is in one key word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right. This key gives you access. It gives you dominion. It wakes up your gifts and callings that's already in you. When you say, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. what you are saying is, I don't know how, but I know it's done. Yes. When you say, thank you, Jesus, yes. you know that everything is okay. When you say thank you to God, it moves him in such a way that he sees your faith being demonstrated. Yes. See, he's looking for some people to demonstrate their faith yes. in the face of obstacles. You know, we all can go through hell and high water, but you don't have to look like it. Hallelujah. You don't have to act like it. Hallelujah. Nobody don't have to know that you're getting tested. Because the Bible says that we all gonna get tested. But do you have to look like you being tested? You recognize that your inner strength does not depend or react to your outward circumstances. Come on, man. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. We got the answers. Yeah, we have the power and authority. And God says, you know, all of this that has happened is to show you who you are. Yeah. But instead of that, some of us succumb to what's going on in the world. That's right. I don't have. That should not be in our vocabulary. Yeah, I can't should not be in our vocabulary. Amen. And so he says, I'm calling you to that place. I love Deut Deuteronomy 10 and 17. He is the God of God's great and mighty, and he cannot be bribed. The kings of this land can be bribed. There's none like God. There's none to be compared to him. There's none that can wage up against him. That's who we serve. Amen? Amen. Now, when I looked at mercy, it says, the love that responds to a human need in an unexpected or unmerited way. Right. You ain't even earned it. Yeah, and he on. pours out his mercy on you. Amen. Unexpected. Have you ever got an unexpected blessing from God? Yeah. If you have, yeah. keep on serving. Because he's good like that. He, he will surprise you in a minute. Because that's his special relationship with his covenant people. Limitations 3.22 said it's the Lord's mercy. Uh -huh. Lord. It's his love that we are not consumed. But his mercies are new every morning. We don't want to get up with yesterday's drama. Yeah. Because he said, your mercy, well, you know what? And I used to do this. Pray about a situation and get up in the morning talking about the same situation. Amen. So what God is saying is, you didn't even believe that I heard you. You didn't even believe that I went before you and said it straight. I, know, I used to hear the saints say, why pray and worry? Or yeah, don't right, pray don't and worry. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what we, we do. We don't pray. understand <laughs> that those mercies is new every morning. And then the end of that scripture says, great is his faithfulness. He's not a liar. He said, my mercies are new every morning. He said, if my mercies weren't new, you would be consumed. Consume yeah. is the plea. Yeah. Hallelujah. The consume is the bar, just destroy. But he said, because of my mercy, even though it was hard, you made it on through. Hallelujah. Can you look back on something that you know should have took you out? But it was God's mercy and new mercies every morning. And so what he's wanting us to do Come on is now. to be thankful. Now you not been right. hearing in living word almost every time we enter the sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what God is wanting. He's just wanting us to be thankful to yeah. what he's done. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, sometimes we get his generosity and his goodness mixed up. Yeah, come on now. His goodness is his righteousness. His holiness. His honesty is his attributes. His generosity is because he loves you. He bless you with things. But a lot of times we don't understand that when you praise him, because he's holy. When you praise him because he's good. When you praise him, Lord, I don't need anything from you. Just like Solomon, he said, just give me wisdom, I don't want nothing to do. 
believers, we get his generosity and his goodness mixed up. Come on, and now. It's two different things. Amen. 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 Great is his faithfulness. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Yes, come on. You know, I was looking at, you know how we say God is good all the time. And all, all the time, time God is good. good. And I wrote, we don't have to catch him in a good mood. We don't have to wait till he feel like listening to us. We don't have to wait for a good time to talk to him. He's available all the time. All the time. You know, we, we, we are fickle. You might call me, and, you know, I might have a headache and that kind of funny. I don't mean to. But I'm just trying to make a point. We are fickle. We don't mean to. We love you. But we're fickle. Right. You know, we're human. That's why he said, I remember that you're just mere flesh. Yeah, mere flesh. I remember. God said, I don't even have to remember that. Yeah. But he is good all the time. So we give thanks to him because he's good. Now, I want to read this in your hearing. And it's found. You can write it down for your later references. It's in Exodus let me see, 34, 6 and 7. Wherever you are, just say thank you, Jesus. Because what you just said to him is, I don't know how, but I know you can. Yes, Lord. I, I know that you're able. Lord, my heart is sad, but I know that you have joy. Just in that one word saying thank you. It says, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed. This is what the Lord said about himself. The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious. He said, I'm long-suffering and I'm abundant in goodness and truth. My God, that's what he said. He proclaimed about himself. He said, this is who I am. Hallelujah. As he passed by. Do not think when the spirit of the Lord is in the room and he's passing up and down the aisles. I know y'all probably think that I'm crazy, but God moves up and down these aisles all the time. The presence of the Lord comes that back rushes down through here. The wind begins to blow. You need to get the spirit if you don't see it. And, yes, and, and you can see, you can feel the mercy. And I just, when I read this, I was like, oh Lord, when you walk in in all of your majesty, see, I see it in all of your majesty. And you're looking around and you see people going through stuff. You would be like, oh, if they only knew that I'm right here. He's like, for I'm merciful. Whatever you've done that the enemy is beating you up, I'm merciful. What he said is mercy's in the house. Goodness in the house. Long suffering is in the house. Yes, come on, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, keep in mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. That's why he said, don't, don't, don't worry about it. The battle's not yours. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord take care of that. Don't be vengeful. You know, we all have to grow in that. If I show say, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them back. That's just who I was before. I'm going to get them back. We'll plot. Tell you an awful story. Awful story. Awful story. I was a young Christian. And I was working for this telecable company. Now, being young in the Lord, I didn't know they didn't like me because I was a Christian. I didn't know that. I couldn't figure out why these people didn't like me. Well, one time, this girl, they go to parties or anything like that, but this girl had went to a party and she said, I know how you can get our boss back. Y'all know I entertain. I said, how? Because this lady, she had wrote me up, she did anything. Now, I'm the Christian. This, this, this right here, I ain't gonna call her name, was the devil, but she brought the kid. And she said, we was at this party <laughs> and we took these pictures. And if you post them up on where we come in in the morning and get the, uh, the day's business, put them up there and everybody will see it. It would advance them. Y'all, I was so excited. I was like, oh, fine. I'm a Christian. Read my word. Mm. At church shouting. Mm. Speaking in tongues. Mm. Yeah, all of that. Took that picture, rolled it up, put it in my locker. But the next morning, I was going to post that. I really was. Evil. That's evil. So, I get the, the, I don't know why, but I take it out of my locker and I'm walking with it and I go home. And the Lord asked me as I'm going into the door, what are you doing? Now, I was 
to you, but I knew the Lord's voice. So I said, uh, I'm going to put this up. I didn't lie. I didn't lie. I didn't lie. I said, I'm going to put this up on the bulletin board because I'm sick of so and so and messing with me and, and writing me up for nothing. So tomorrow, I'm telling the Lord this. I'm going to get her good. Everybody going to see her and they're going to know that she's not about nothing. And he said, is that my love? Mm, amen. That's what she mean to me, Lord. Y'all, he said, tear the post up. Y'all, I went to the patio. I was back to wrestling with the Lord. Because I was like, oh, I can get her so good. She thinks she's so much. And, and then everybody thinks she's this and this. But if they see this, and we had it blown out, when they see this. And the Lord said, you tear that up. Right. Because I've forgiven you for worse. For worse. Come on now. Amen. Amen. 
All right. The second one is creation. Uh, praise. Thank him for his creation. I think it's really sad if you never smell the freshness of a new morning. Get up early and go outside. It's like a heaven street sweeper have come through. The air is fresh because we're starting a new day. New mercy. The air is fresh. It's real quiet. Oh, and you're talking about some worship and praise with some God when it's early in the morning. See, that's why the devil wants to slumber. I'm not a morning person. Try it. Try it. Just get up. Creation. You begin to see the sun rise. And I think like this. Wow. Zillions of years ago, he told the sun on October 7, 2020, rise. And it was established. You don't have to keep saying it over and over. It was established. The sun automatically knows it's October 7th, it's 6 o'clock, rise. Because it obeys creation, obeys its commands better than we. And the Bible says, who is man that you're so mindful of him? The creation. I think it's really sad when you don't see the moon. I know sometimes in, you know, it's better to come from the country, so it's better in the country to see the stars better mm -hmm. because of not the buildings and all, or whatever the obstacles is. But I think it's bad when you don't notice that. I was thinking about Sister Alice when I was uh, studying the creation part of this because Sister Alice. <laughs> It's the same all the time. Yes, yeah. Don't care what she's going through, she's the same all the time. Yeah. Same demeanor. Yeah. You don't know if she's mad or same yeah. demeanor. Yeah. You don't know if she had a rough day, you ain't gonna know. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. How you doing, Sister Alice? I'm blessed and so are you. Yeah. And take your temperature and send you on about your way. Yeah. I learned probably about a year ago to stop saying this. <laughs> okay, so Woo! So it's hot out there. She said, yeah, but if it was cold, we would complain about it. <laughs> One time I said, whoo, it's hot. Yeah, okay, but if it was cold, we'd complain about that. And I had to think about it. I was like, I'm going to say that too. I'm not going to say nothing like that. But she stands in the blessed place. She stands and she doesn't move. Take your temperature and say, I'm blessed and so are you. I love a section of the color purple of the movie. And I like it. I can't say what she said, but in the part where she was in this field of beautiful uh, purple flowers. Mm -hmm. And she said, I think it just makes God mad if you walk by the color purple and not and notice it. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed the seasons change the beautiful leaves? Yeah. That's God's. That's him. That's his canvas. Hallelujah. A sunset is his canvas. Can you look at a sunset and say, look at God. Yeah. While you're so consumed with what's wrong and who you need to vote for, you can't thank God for his creation. You can, when you woke up this morning, the earth had not tilted the wrong way, but it's, it turned exactly correct. When you got up, your house wasn't sideways because there was an earthquake. Because it rotated the same way. He said, things like that is my people will begin to thank me for. Yeah. And we think, well, that's nothing. Yes, it is. Because one flick of the finger, we gone. That's right. I read this. Carbon dioxide, listen to this, y'all. Levels in the atmosphere can be good or bad, okay? We've got to have it. Too much of it to kill you. But if it drops in the Earth's atmosphere and causes the Earth's temperature to drop 50 degrees below zero, everything would ice over, including ocean and land. Just turn, everything would freeze. Now, who regulates that? I know scientists think they do. I know scientists, and we appreciate that. But you ain't told carbon dioxide to stay at its level. All God did was let you learn some of his wisdom of all knowing. 
But it's God that tells the carbon dioxide to stay at its level. Hallelujah. Then, look at this. If the temperature would get too high, it would evaporate all waters. Every lake, every lake, every pond, every ocean would be dry. Amen. Now, who tells it to regulate so that my people can have water? Can you thank him for that? Your water, you, you know what? We need to, in, the, in the, the world we live in, if you cook with your the fossil water, drink it, whatever, you show me to pray over it. That's why you tell me to say, pray over your food, pray over your water, pray over everything. <laughs> Creation. He knows the number and he knows the name of the stars. He knows them. He knows every number. Matter of fact, we go deeper than that. He knows every hair on your head, including the ones that fell in the floor this morning. He knows. Just bring it a point. This is the God that we serve. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, all that he's doing, my soul cries out hallelujah. Now, he knows the number and the names of the stars. Check this out. Uh -huh. There is more stars than all the grain of sand on the whole planet Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he knows. He knows. Now, you mean to tell me, mm -hmm. my God, if he knows every star by name, and it's more stars than the grain of sand on earth, you mean to tell me he can't help us? You mean to tell me he can't hear you when you're crying out and you're his child? The devil is alive. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. Nothing. 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 Job 12, 7. I like this. It says, ask the beast, the fish. Every living thing is in his hand and the breath of all mankind. This is my favorite scripture. When I'm going through, you know, have you ever been going through and you're standing in faith, but it seems like it's taking a while for anything to, to manifest and, you know, then you have to war. You have to war with your mind. Let's just be truthful. You have to war with your mind. You have to war with your thoughts. You have to take your key mm -hmm. to the test, which has all the answers, and you have to keep repeating that. You have to keep, feed. you can't feed yourself on TV to get your answer when you're going through something. But have you ever been going through something and it, it, it just seems like it's just not going away and it seems like God just don't hear. God always takes me to the scripture. Isaiah 7 and 18. God can hiss for the fly in the rivers of Egypt. Oh Hallelujah! And they come. And the bee in the Assyrian country, he can call and they come. So no problem that we have. You mean to tell me a fly in the rivers of Egypt have more authority than us with his children? The, the Bible always says, who is this man that you're so mindful of them? The angels are constantly around him day and night calling, holy, holy, holy. And again. When you say father, he stops. He stops. I hear him, my baby. Even when he when you say Jesus, he stops. Who is this man that you are mindful of him? The Sunday. Who is this man? They want to know. As we reflect on creation. Thanksgiving should fill your heart. As we, as we reflect on who he truly is, you should never allow yourself to come into his presence beat down. Look, I was dog tired when I came in today. Dog tired. But I went and I said, Lord, I'm, you know, I'm just mere flesh and I have nothing for them, but I know you do, so just use me. Just use me. You know, I surrender to you. You know what your people need, Lord. I open my heart and I just ask you just to 
Just come out of it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because we have today's business, but we have to get to the place where we have authority to just step right on out of that into the spiritual realm. Oh, yeah. All right. Then the next thing that we have to be, well, we should be, is thankful for our redemption. Yeah. It makes me sad. It really do make me sad when I see people. And I, I guess as we mature more in Christ, our heart breaks for the loss. If your heart doesn't break for God, you know, I can remember years back before being saved, and you would see people on the street doing stupid stuff, you would laugh. But it's not funny no more. You know why? Because not only is, 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 is they lost, but time is winding down. The earth's clock is ending. Our redemption toy not. And I remember thinking, Granny and said, oh, they say that all the time. They say that all the time. They say that all the time. But I understand what they meant when they would say, it's drawing now, you never know. Because if you look around, people are leaving less than right. They are leaving less than right. So our exodus began at the cross, the death of Jesus Christ. He redeemed us, first of all, from sin. Hallelujah. Romans 5, 10. When we were enemies of God. Now that scripture scares me to think that we were enemies, enemies, enemies. And then we have the nerve to sash up in church thinking we somebody. <laughs> and the Bible said he was an enemy. That's deep to me. Wait, wait, you know, I'm like, a, wait, wait a minute now, God. <laughs> an enemy? He said, when we were enemies of God. You're not saved, you're an enemy. Mm. Some people who proclaim to be saved, they're enemies of God. They're not really saved. They're just not saved. Okay. Then it says, it's just that God. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Can you just thank him that you're saved? Yes. Can you just thank yes. God? Yes. That way back there when I had that bottle of booms for him in my hand and we driving, I didn't crash and kill myself? Thank you, Jesus. Can you thank God when you were sitting at my club and you know that man came in that shoe? God saved you. His mercy. 
Blessed are those who iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Oh my God. Even when we sin now, all we have to do is repent and ask for forgiveness. And we're back in right standing. Oh, what a marvelous God we serve. Oh, what a gracious God we serve. Oh, what a wondrous God we serve. Oh, what a loving God we serve. That he did not give up on us. You know, everybody sitting in here, God did not give up on you. Unless you came out of your mom's womb speaking in tongues, we were all sinners. Doing stuff, you know. We just we didn't know no better. Okay. Uh, Galatians 1 and 4. Let me read this in your hearing. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us, and that deliverance is rescue. We needed rescue and didn't even know it. Sometimes we even need help and we don't even understand it. He delivered us from the present evil of this world. Way back there. And that do drop in. What a name. Do drop in. Mm -hmm. God was rescuing me. He was sending his angels to me. See, Satan didn't even understand that the angels was protecting me then. I didn't know that the angels was protecting me then. We stole the car, y'all. And yeah, we did. We stole the car, me and my friends. Now, it was taking turns driving the car. Now, we knew who the car was. And we had asked them, and they said, no, but we took, took the girl car. Okay, that's still it. So we take this car, y'all, and we all up on Hickory. Hickory is like this. It's real hilly. We were not experienced drivers. You know what else I thank God for? First of all, you know, I prayed real hard. When I had my children, I said, God, please don't let me be nothing like me. And God answered my prayer. I begged him. I said, God, please, mercy. Mercy. My girls, oh, Jesus. And when they would try something, I would remember what I would do. And they would, how do you know? I said, because you me. You me. And I'm going to cut that off right now because I'm not going to have it. Now, Amen. they said that I'm an, I was a street. They couldn't listen to no second time. Like, all I had there on was TV. And that wasn't true. That's what they tell folks. <laughs> what they tell folks. They said that I went off because I came in the house and some rap was on. They said I went off and, and it was annoying everybody. Telling them the devil getting out of the house. And I would always tell them my life. You know. Now they think. But they didn't have like that. But anyway, we stole this girl's car, took the car without permission, that's still it. And it was Joyce's time to drive. So her and Katie were switching. I'm in the back. Her and Katie were switching over. Somebody didn't put the car in park. <laughs> and somebody's foot in the switchover hit the gas. And we was on the hill and we took off. All I remember, y'all, is I saw the trees, the top of trees. That's all I remember. Now, Granny has said, when something happened to you and you need the Lord, just, just call on him. Y'all, I was hollering Jesus to the top of my lungs. And God saved us. We hit the water. We went over this fence and went into this creek. Jumped out, ran home, changed clothes, and put my wet clothes under the porch. The police did come. We were in trouble. But I say all of this is because I look back on that and I could have been dead. There were kids that did less than that and they died. Jesus. The Lord says, Well, I know the, the thoughts and plans that I have for you. Oh, you can just understand it. He delivered us from this present evil world according to the will of God. It was God's will that each and every one of us is sitting here tonight. His will. No matter what you went through, you made it. So you ought to have a thank you in your heart. Hallelujah. You ought to have a thank you in your mouth. Okay, one, one, the last one I got to hear it. My favorite, victory. Because it ain't nothing like when you know that you stood your ground. And you pray. You might have more with your mind, but you pray, and God brings the victory. And you know that only God brought you through that. Hallelujah. I, I have been through so much health wise, and, and, and God just keeps bringing me through. He's my God. Whenever praise went forth, the victory manifested with victory. The victory, the victor manifested with victory. 
Second Chronicles 20, 15. He told them, don't be moved by the great multitude. Don't be moved by this, this giant of sickness that has come upon you. Don't be moved by poverty. Don't be moved by marital uh, situations. Don't be moved by people judging you wrong, talking about you. Don't be moved by that. Because God is your warrior. Yeah. This is where he wants us to be. When somebody talks about you, say, well, thank you, Jesus. I must be doing something right. I have to do that today. I have to do that today. Yeah. I say it's only, I tell Angela, it's only because I got to teach tonight like this. She was standing over me. I was looking at Angel. I said, you hear this demon? Do you hear this demon? I said, it's because I have to teach tonight. This demon wants me to react. Angel, do you hear this demon? I was like, wow, this is nonsense. But I know I wasn't going to respond and get up here and tell y'all be saying thank you. <laughs> I know I wasn't going to do that. Right. We got to walk it out. Right. We can't preach. Preaching and don't live it. Right. The devil is alive. Okay, don't be moved by the great multitudes that you see. The battle is not yours. This is what he told Jehoshaphat. This is why I love it. I love praise and worship. I tell you all the time, I love these of praise and worship. Something happens in praise and worship. It, it, it just turns the atmosphere. Just forget about it. If somebody looking at you, don't worry about if you won't be. Yeah. God don't care if you won't be. He don't care if you're, you're weak and twisted. He don't care if you're masking and you know, all. It just gives him some praise. Something happens in praise and worship. The atmosphere flips and changes. And this is why it's so vital. These people were up against a mighty army. And he said, don't worry about the multitude. Mm -hmm. He got the singers together. They began to praise God and his holiness. And God set an ambush. <laughs> While we are in here praising him, he is setting an ambush for the enemy. Every plot, every plan. And it's so, isn't that easy? That's no work. Because I love him. It, that is so easy to lift your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. That is so easy to say, fill me up, Lord, to my overflow. Yeah. Oh, I want to run over. Hallelujah. Mama. That's so easy Amen. to say, God, you're Amen. able. And just worship him. Close out everything. Yeah. And just worship him. Because while you're in that spiritual realm, God is working things out that you've been dealing with for five years. If you just praise him. If you just give him thanks. But some people just come in because it's like tradition, you know. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -mm -mm. More than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8, 37. For every one born of God overcomes this world. That's right. Amen. Now, when you walk around talking about woe is me, and you're a Christian, something wrong with that picture. Yeah, come on. You're either not reading your word, you're not believing your word that you're reading, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you're just acting it out. Pastor's been talking about tradition. Because when you read this, mm -hmm. God is not a liar. No. So God says, everyone born of God, I'm born again overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Guess what? My faith. All I got to do is stand in faith. Giving thanks gives us perseverance and stamina to endure. Being thankful gives you peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Uh, you know, when your mind is racing, just, just be quiet and say, Lord, I thank you. And watch what happens. The devil can't stay around when you praise it. Jesus he can only stay around when you woe and me. One last thing. Charles Spurgeon is a person that I read. And I like this. He wrote, he said, He, which is God, is good beyond all others. He alone is good in the highest sense. You, it, it, no one can touch God's good. Not a billionaire, zillionaire in this world can touch God's good. He is the source of good. He is the sustainer of good. 
He is the perfecter of good. He is the reward of good. Amen. 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 I just pray that something was said that will bless you on this journey. Above any, anything, if you, get, if you get anything out of here, remember to say thank you to Jesus. Amen. Remember it's a weapon. You know, weapons are used to fight with. It's a weapon. It's a key, but it's a weapon. Because when you say thank you to God and the enemy is trying to torment you, you just cut him with the word. When you say thank you, you just summons your help. You summons your help. You're not by yourself. So no matter what, no matter what you're going through, uh -huh. stand strong in your faith. Amen. Yeah. Be thankful. Be thankful. Yeah. Adore the Lord. Thank him for his creation. Thank him. Take time to, to smell the freshness in the morning. Take time to look at the, go to the arboretum, beautiful flowers. Enjoy his nature. Can't nobody do that. They, they try to cross pollinate, but it, it looks weird. God's original colors is awesome. They try to make humans, but they don't have no soul, so they just stand there bland. God is the creator of all things. So we give God all praise Amen. and we thank him tonight. Amen. I just pray that anyone listening on YouTube or Facebook, whatever you've been going through, just surrender tonight and give God thanks. I know it sounds so simple that it sounds like it won't work, but I guarantee you, don't say anything, but just thank you, Lord. Remember what he's done for you in the past. And if you haven't received the Lord as your Savior, we invite you tonight to receive him as your Savior, to get to know him, repent of your sins, ask him into your heart and mean it. And he will come in your heart and he will be your friend. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll fight with you. He'll love you. He'll be your friend when no one's your friend. Just surrender to him tonight. And we thank you, Lord God, for those who have asked you to come into their heart, Lord. Forgive them of their sins, Lord God. Start them on this new journey, this wonderful journey. In the midst of all of the turmoil in the world, there's glory in serving you, Father. So we thank you tonight, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thankful tonight. Yes, Lord. We're thankful tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you tonight. We thank you back. Hallelujah. But today's was a promise to us. Come on, Pastor. But God, you allow us to see you. Yes, yes. So many often times we wait for the, the big things to be thankful yes, for. Yes. And we just thankful for you allowing us to see one more day. Come on, who's thankful tonight? Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. Amen. What a word we received tonight. Amen. Amen. Another way we can show how thankful we are yes, is through our giving. Yes, Amen. As we get ready to show us seed to the house of God today. Yeah. Amen. Those that are viewing my live stream on YouTube, you can go to www.livingwordtexas.com and show your feed there and show God how thankful that you are. Yeah. So as we prepare to give, come on, let's get on our team. Bring your offering to the altar. Lay your offering to the altar. Lay your offering to the altar. You may well come with a thanksgiving in your heart. Yes, come on, Pastor. Come with a thanksgiving in your heart. Father, we thank you tonight. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Father, you've been a deliverer, and we thank you. God, you've been a confident, and we thank you. We have a thankful heart, God. Teach us not to have a grudging heart, God. But always being a mindful of thanksgiving, Lord. 
Hallelujah, God. Let us always be mindful of the goodness of you, God. We bless you tonight, God. For the thank of our heart, God. We thank you that you're moving away the heart of stone. But God, you're giving us a heart of thanksgiving, God. Let the mind of the day, word of David be and we'll bless the Lord at all times. Your praise shall continually be in our hearts, in our mouths, God. We thank you tonight. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you, O Lord. There is none like our daddy. Let the heavens keep the earth. Because we're so thankful tonight, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your work, woman, servant, God, that delivered your word, God. God, we pray, God, you return a hundredfold, God. Return a hundredfold, God. Return a hundredfold, God. Return a hundredfold, God. That she's poured out to us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the offering that's received tonight. Thank you for the seed sown, God. Here, God, physically. Thank you for the seed sown, God, electronically online, God. We thank you, God, that we gave God with a thankful heart that you're showing up in the midst of it for a hundredfold return, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And God, as you manifest yourself, we'll take no credit for ourselves, God. But we'll always turn to give you the glory. We'll always turn to give you the honor, God. We always turn to give you the praise. And we dismiss from this place. But never your presence, God. Let this word go with us, God. That we not only been a hearer, God, but let us transition to be a doer of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, as we receive this word tonight, God, the key to the kingdom of thankfulness, God. God, we thank you, God, that on purpose tomorrow we'll be thankful, God. On purpose tomorrow we'll be joyful, God. We won't let the enemy steal our joy, God. We won't come against us, God. But God, we declare tomorrow, God, from this day to go. We don't wait till tomorrow. From this very moment forward, God, we got nothing but thanksgiving on our lips. We won't talk about the problem. But we'll give you praise, God. We'll give you thanksgiving, God, for your promises. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen.